good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, this is the entertainment panel. So hopefully the gentlemen here uh, will be entertaining as promised to me uh, behind, uh, behind the scenes uh, just a moment ago. So uh, it's been a long day, but hopefully this is going to rejuvenate you. And with that, let me kickstart uh, the, the topic for today, which is really you know content at your fingertips. The whole revolution that entertainment has seen with uh, with digital entertainment now, uh, the thing. How many in this audience are subscribers to any of the OTT uh, platforms, whether it be Netflix, Amazon, Voot, MX Player? Can I have a show of hands? Okay, that's better. Okay, great. So you will be in agreement that you know this is the future, but let's see if it's really the future and how it's shaping up with uh, the gentleman here. Just to give you a brief introduction of my uh, panel, cumulatively speaking, the cumulative experience uh, of this panel is close to, I don't know, a, de a century really. And they've all been doyens of entertainment uh, in the traditional form and now some of them have moved to the new age digital form of entertainment, so hoping to get a lot of insight. So let me start uh, with you, Tarun. <laughs> uh, you know, now you're heading uh, Z5. We all know that you've had an illustrious journey with, uh, with uh, entertainment in your previous avatars. What is the most stunning revelation, according to you, uh, in terms of digital entertainment from a consumer standpoint uh, and the way they are viewing this? Good, bad, or ugly? <laughs> so it's interesting, right? Uh, what is digital? do for entertainment or what it does for content and content creators. I think the most stunning discovery or the most stunning uh, information that is actually kind of, <clears throat> you know, used as, as an everyday parlance is the level of personalization and segmentation that technology can do for you. Um, what we've really seen is truly coming alive of the segment of one. Uh, and all the artificial intelligence, algorithms, machine learning, put into work can give you such magic that to give you an understanding that there is nothing called a home page anymore, right? Uh, we all believe that there was a home page, right? We, when the traditional form of websites and all of that came about, the product owner, the publisher would have a home page where they would put out stuff and would believe that this is what people must consume. If you go to YouTube today, and Satya will tell you more about that yeah. at some point in time. We almost sit on a panel every week, I think. <laughs> but, uh, or if you go onto our app at Z5, most of what you see on the homepage is not the publisher's homepage, but it is the consumer's and the user's homepage. And that's the level of personalization that you end up seeing through technology. Everything that you like, you consume, and you would want to consume going forward is what makes your homepage now. And, and it's it's simple, but it's really complex at that. Yeah. Of course, of course. And Satya, now to you as uh, you know somebody who uh, runs content for YouTube, and the fact that you've also you know had a lot of experience in in the broadcast world. Uh, so you you know you've you've seen push, and now you're now you're doing pull. What is the most stunning revelation for you? So uh, you know when I when I look at this uh, from a bird's eye view. Fundamentally, nothing has changed, but everything has, right? If you looked at <clears throat> how it was in the traditional uh, uh, land of, let's say, television, there was still someone who created that content. There was still someone who then curated that content. There was still someone who put some technology to deliver that content. And then there was the consumer who consumed it, right? Fundamentally, that hasn't changed. But uh, what has changed are, uh, one, the speed at which content gets created, right? Uh, television ostensibly creates maybe you know two to three hours of content per day, a, a channel or something like that, right? Uh, but if you then look at the collective digital content which is out there, that number is is just exponential compared to what content gets created on television. And I call that just the speed of content creation, right? You are a content creator. I am a content creator. We are all content creators in our daily lives in that sense, and we find platforms to then put it out there, right? Social media being a great example. So I think the speed of content has changed, right? Um, but now, as Tarun pointed out, right, the algorithm behind it, which is giving you the best possible content you want, customizing it for you, so it's content 
uh, at, you know, if you can call it that, content at your algorithm, okay. right? <laughs> uh, there is uh, content on demand, right. right? You can actually speak to something and get your content at right. this point of time, right? right? And you, you no longer need to type anything or press a button. Uh, so which is, you know, content at your beck and call, perhaps, right? Sure. So nothing has changed, but everything has, right? That's one way to look at, look at uh, everything. And for a content creator who's out there, mm -hmm. if you can then make sense of how to adapt yourself and then think about how things could further adapt, mm -hmm. that's when I think you'll find a lot of success in, in the way things are at this point of time, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rupak, let me come to you. And so taking off from what Tarun and Satya said, if you can bring to the fore how how the, how, how the consumer has changed in terms of how they view content because of the offering change. If, if there has been a change at all, or is it fundamentally still the same? Well, I think uh, the change is taking place, and the fundamental shift that will take place, and it's a bit controversial to say because there are a lot of people over here who perhaps depend on it. Uh, there's, and I know not everyone, most people here are probably not from media, and even though you are consumers of content online, um, some certain terminology may not be something that you're familiar with. So there's AVOD, which is advertising video on demand, and there's SVOD, which is subscription video on demand. So obviously, if you pay for it, it's SVOD. And if your advertiser is paying for the content that you watch, it's AVOD. Um, my sense is that today, people are still very tolerant of advertising and are willing to watch content because the advertiser is funding them. As these platforms start to proliferate, and as there's more and more content available, it seems that that exchange is going to fall apart. There has to be fundamental value exchange between the audience and the content, whether it's in the form of entertainment, um, uh, information, utility, education, whatever it might be, or cold hard cash even in some cases. The advertiser will not be able to just show ads in this world any longer. So what that then leads to is a situation where you have brands actually integrating content and creating more and more branded content. So I think that's going to be a fundamental shift that we're seeing. Well, that's an interesting point, Rupak. But for that, consumers have to also start spending then if they, they want do. Un they do. uninterrupted viewing. They right? do. And, and we will. So yeah. let me take. Let me give, let me throw that question to Shonil. Do you think that uh, you know consumers? more and more consumers, and let's not just look at the elite or you know, uh, SEC A++ uh, uh, you know, audience profile. Do you think, are we seeing an actual increase in, in consumption, paid consumption? Because, because my content is important to me. So in my opinion, and a lot of the folks on the stage run businesses where we're starting to see the early stages of this, which is actually a very good sign because subscription money is the holy grail which all of us are chasing. That's when the business model will actually make complete sense. You know, for us, at, as you know, we run a, a news website, we see this a little longer, longer way in the future. It might happen for entertainment and music and things like that where it's taking off. But I think for news, it'll be a little more complicated. Uh, I run the Times uh, Network's uh, news website called timesnownews.com. I just want to call out that we, uh, we've seen a very interesting year. Uh, like Deep mentioned in the last panel, we had a massive late mover advantage. So we've grown very quickly, but it's purely, presently the model is on advertising, and in the near future also I see it as an advertising-driven model. Primarily in text, maybe video will happen sooner. So essentially you're saying you don't think consumers will be paying anytime soon? I don't think they'll pay for text. Uh, so again, fundamental uh, uh, lens through which this should be viewed. Again, I don't think anything mu much has changed because consumers have always been paying for content. Sure. Right? I mean, we've always been paying a cable wala who came to our house. Um, and in fact, that is, it, it's, not, it's not something that one needs to change behavior of. Mm. Consumers have always been paying in India. So in, in, in a lot of ways, I don't think it's early days as such. It's just that it's perhaps uh, a change in the way we pay, right? I mean, fundamentally, what, there were like 300 channels we paid for. And now we're all thinking how to pay for about 30 to 40 such apps or platforms and things like that, right? So um, what has changed is what has actually happened in, in the television world, right? Uh, with you know, certain changes that have happened in the ecosystem at this point of time where it's moved from a, perhaps a B2B to C uh, to a B2C sure, uh, yeah. scenario at this yeah. point of time. Yeah. 
So actually, the I change is more. I think he's referring more, to the tri yeah. order, uh, where you know consumers today have the are empowered to choose and pay for the channel that they want to view, and it's no more uh, your cable wala or the your or your DTH operator. Uh, forcing the bundle upon you. That's yeah. what you're referring Now's to. The time when we People get are him not in. just paying for content. They're also paying for convenience, right? So when you pay for Z5 or Netflix or something like that, you're paying for convenience to watch it at your time when you want to watch it, to be able to download it, to be able to do it on the go, to be able to watch various formats. So it's, it's different, right? To watch it on a smart TV versus a, a mobile phone, you're not paying just for you know, content itself. You're paying for convenience, you're paying for technology. Globally, when Netflix started in the US, they were only charging for convenience because all the content, they didn't have any originals, mind you. Yeah. They, all the content was network content, but the networks only delivered it in a linear format. What they did was they, they bought net, network content for cheap and just made it an on-demand service, which consumers started to pay $9 or $8 for just being on demand. Sure. So technology actually helps you do much more and helps you discover content and you pay for all of that rather than just paying for content. Do you see them actually paying? We see them paying in, in hordes, okay? Uh, okay. So we're pro possibly the largest producers of original content in the country. And when we took this path about six months ago, I still remember talking, uh, you know, being on a panel with Satya and, and we were having this discussion about language and vernacular and so on and so forth. And we committed ourselves to creating 90 series. And everybody thought we were a little off the rocks, right? But not only do they pay in tier one cities, but they pay in tier two cities. And we created packages around languages like Tamil, Telugu, Kannada. And we saw a huge offtake of all of that, even in smaller cities. How encouraging. Yeah, very encouraging. People are willing to pay for quality content, but also for convenience. Yeah. Is there a contra view on the panel? See, when you think uh, free, like what Shonil said, please don't forget that they pay for the data. Yeah, like a basic cable charges that you pay, you also pay for the data. It's not that you, it's totally free. So yes, the relative numbers may be different, but you, also, you do pay for yeah, the it's data. It's just that Mr. Ambani has made it really free. <laughs> <laughs> but the other point I would, you know, uh, interesting point what Rupo was saying was it's ad funded. It's not ad funded, it's ad supported. Currently, we are in the ad supported uh, scenario. We will move to the ad funded uh, scenario, but most of it, Consumers, you know, there are a lot of people right on the app or on the Play Store saying we, there are too many ads and so on and so forth. So we told our team one fine day, and you said, please write back and say, you want the ad-free environment? This is a subscription, pa subscription package, go and pay for it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, this service is an ad-supported service to make it free for you. Sure, sure. Uh, spot on. I think what will die is advertising that does not add value to the audience's life in any form. Okay. Let me get uh, the MX play of you. Uh, so Abhishek, uh, you know, You've heard the panel so far, and you're a completely free platform, right? So you are, uh, you know, so when Tarun here says that people are willing to pay for, my, for content, and, you know, and he's very optimistic about it, do you have a, why are you free then? See, even I'm optimistic about, about people paying. I hope they pay sooner than later. The only reason why we are free is what we have realized is the affinity to pay is there, but the ability to pay is still not there. Because the pipes to pay and the credit cards and the wallets and all of that are still not deeply penetrated into this ecosystem. So even if I want to pay, how do I pay? I mean, the, I mean that is what we were speaking when Make My Trip came into India for the first time or when it was founded. Yeah. That was a bold step. But how many of them actually paid for uh, flight tickets or train tickets online? That's number one. Number two, why we are, why we are free? is for the simple fact that we are a brand new a brand new platform. I mean, and it makes complete sense for us to go the a AVO deeper way. Yeah, there's a journey to be taken. We were free for the first six months, and, and over a period of time, people realize you know, where the trend is going, and if there is enough traction, they can up the level of content creation, sure. and then go pay. But yes, it, there's a journey, and, and it makes complete sense for them for where they are. How do you see, do you think, like you said, the content's getting richer? We can't debate that. It has, undoubtedly. But do you think, uh, with the content evolution that one sees because of the burst of platforms, uh, uh, is the money that is being invested, right, is it justified in terms of returns? Or, and if it's not, 
what is the waiting or gestation period? How many years? I think um, platforms which uh, take responsibility of the money that is being invested on them will always uh, get more investments. Uh, so digital, has, which has been built on uh, you know, ROI that it delivers. Uh, and if I'm not wrong, you're talking about advertising uh, investments. I'm talking about money Fine. being plowed in by all these platforms, Yeah, right? so, okay. Answering that question, uh, I'll again go back 10 years. India made three, 800 movies uh, 10 years back. Today it is making 1,800. Uh, the bigger movies are be becoming even bigger. Uh, the cash flows are becoming far better. Uh, if you see Yashraj or any big uh, content owner, they used to make four movies, five movies in a year. Today, they're making 20, 25. Their cash flows are becoming better because of digitization. Uh, even uh, languages beyond the four or five big languages in the country, content is, rich content is being created in those languages. Let me, let me talk about advertiser interest. And, and Parthu, maybe you can take this. Uh, of course, I also am leaving all the, the measurement questions for later for you. But before that, <laughs> before that, so you know, you were saying it's about two thousand crores right now. The current the total OTT to, uh, total OTT, yeah, right? Out of would. which seventeen hundred crores would come from uh, advertising, Avod, yeah. right? Uh, and the rest between the few players that remain. Do you see substantial interest and you know escalation of this figure? Let's say in the next five years. Or do you see that the group, that, that, that it's going to remain a very small pie in terms of advertiser interest? See, uh, you're saying the interplay between advertising and subscription? Yeah. Or no, no, overall? no. Advertising, advertising interest, pure play, yeah. See, I think it will grow substantially in the next uh, couple of years. It'll, see, this 1700 doesn't include YouTube, for that matter, okay, the, which is another 2000, 2500 crores very clearly. <laughs> so, yeah, which is, I mean, you're as, as big as a, any other broadcaster, so to speak. But uh, I'm saying, yeah, this will grow in the next few years. I mean, I think we are starting at a very low base now. I, I see no reason why it should not grow yeah. substantially. And you know, yeah. sorry, sir. No, no, go ahead. No, no. So video is really the form of digital advertising that is going to grow. And the sharper segmentation that digital advertising can provide the higher CPMs the advertisers will be willing to pay. I'm glad you brought that point. I was waiting for somebody to bring that point, because now I'm going to ask, who is monitoring? Who's monitoring? Yeah. Then yeah. So who's monitoring? We, uh, we have Moat and Dar embedded on it, both Nielsen as well as uh, uh, Oracle. So we are very transparent, and most good platforms have both Moat and Dar embedded. These are all third-party tools, and everybody uses these third-party tools, whether it's Unilever, whether it's PNG. Very transparent, very attribution-led. There may not be a single currency that every OTT platform has, mm. But majority of them globally use Moat and Dar for them. Google still doesn't use them, but I think at some point in time they will. L let, me, uh, let me ask uh, you, Rupak, as you are now also supplying uh, content to uh, OTT players, what is the kind of, what is, and also, uh, also uh, Tarun, you can, you can you know, uh, wane on this. From the days of how content was, let's say, sourced from production houses and content suppliers, in uh, the good old days of just TV, as opposed to the, the, the new days of TV plus digital. Uh, what has changed in the way uh, networks, uh, digital networks are asking for content? What, what's the brief you get? I think they're really targeting um, lots of sub audiences. That's the big difference. That's the biggest, the fundamental difference. If you look at it, uh, and I'm talking about not just from you know information coming from this side, but even if you look at when we're talking to English channels, for example, sure. the same channels that we were talking to two years ago about, say, um, branded content, AFPs, et cetera, or any kinds of conversations we were having, the demeanor, the attitude, the willingness to have a conversation today is about 10x what it was two years ago because nobody's watching that stuff anymore. Right? So that's one side of it. The other side of it is, as I was saying, they're able to, you've got a Made in Heaven, you've got a, what was that, Mirzapur, you've got stuff on uh, Balaji, you've got stuff on Z5. I mean, if you look at the plethora, the, the entire range of content, 
you can't really say that there's really a pattern. There's all kinds of content. So that's the big thing about this medium. I think you must give it to digital. And Sonali, you and me have now matured over the years of watching this, right, for 20 years about. Not as much as this, <laughs> But the fact is that you have to give it to digital to have reinvented content in this country. Whether you look at you know, some of the content that Netflix has made, whether some of the content Amazon has made, or some of the stuff we've made. The cinematic appeal, no the doubt. bringing of really good, unique storytelling, and also really good acting talent onto the platform has happened because of digital. Actually, both I think for a lot of consumers that. and for producers of content. I think it's exactly. a great opportunity, very honestly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just building on that point. Both, right? both of them. Yeah. No, I mean, my point is, see, as a consumer, and if I talk purely as a consumer, yeah. it's great news for me. Sure. Right? I have a myriad of content today that is actually targeting me as, as the consumer, as opposed yeah. to, let's say, you know, a few years ago, where the only offering broadly st stood in the SaaS and Bahu category. So, yeah, so today yeah. I'm, much, I'm, I'm much more empowered as a consumer. My question to the panel is, does that make you empowered as businesses? Because while I'm happy, will you guys be happy? Because you, you're the ones who are putting in the money. Does the return, when, does the retur when, when are the returns going to come for you? Okay, so I'll take this first. Yeah. And I, I want to bust this myth about return on investment on content, right? <clears throat> and I say this at every forum. Please understand that this is a digital platform. This is not TV. Okay. It's not when you put out the content on a television network for that night, night and it's over forever. This is lifetime value. When you come in to watch the fourth or the fifth or the sixth season of House of Cards, you may be a first time consumer on Netflix and you'll start consuming that from season one. Sure. And every new consumer that Netflix or Amazon or Z5 or MX Player acquires goes back watching this content from where it started. The convenience of having the content available and the convenience of having content on demand is just that. It's lifetime value. Yeah. And this lifetime value can last. I started watching Grey's Anatomy just last year. It is now 14 years old. Yeah. I'm watching content that is 14 years old. And it still has value for me. It came onto Amazon Prime only now. So imagine the value of content. You're talking about <laughs> years and years of mining this good content. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I'll, I'll give you an know. example. Sorry, sorry. I'll give an example. Uh, there's this iconic movie called Andaz Apna Apna, uh, which obviously had its run in the theaters, then it has had its run on satellite. Um, uncannily, that movie came onto YouTube about a month ago, right? So you can now watch Andaz Apna Apna on, on, on YouTube. And uh, in a matter of like six weeks, there were like four million people who ended up watching that, right? So what digital truly does it is that it allows every piece of content to maximize its existence and reach, right? That's what it truly does. And, and it's kind of liberating for a content creator because then you are not dependent on either a gatekeeper or a window keeper. You know what I mean? So it, it just truly allows content to find its nth consumer and then some more. Uh, I have a slightly, slightly yeah. different view, I mean, perspective rather. I think good content will always find its consumer thanks to the facilitation of technology, okay, which is the, coming back to your first question, which is personalization and also convenience. Sure. You can watch it the way you want uh, and your kind of stuff will be thrown at you. But the issue is, how far will it be funded? Exactly. The capital markets have <laughs> kind of backed Netflix and Amazon in a way which has never been done before. Mm. Will they really back many more such players? Time will only tell. Or will it be another gold rush where there will be a lot of shakeout in some time? Time will only tell whether that, how, how it will pan out. So, you uh, know, I just have one point, sure. you know, and like a lot of people on this panel, in the news business, this is a big challenge for us because our content is not time independent. That is true. What was valid yesterday is not. So it's a continuous factory machinery model which is continuously churning news. The only thing which we see as an opportunity is, you know, micro documentaries and short format uh, content which is now living online for a longer period of time. But it's a little bit more challenging for news. And uh, presently, you know, online consumption of news is massive. But we just have to keep feeding that beast on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> The good news is clearly that we as consumers, you, the audience and me, 
Uh, we have uh, lots to watch, lots more coming. People on this panel are continuing to, uh, will continue to plow money in and give us fabulous content. How they make their money is really their problem. <laughs> on that note, thank you so much. Thank you.